I want to welcome our next speaker, um, and uh, he's incredible. He's had a massive background uh, in bank acquisition, business development, legal and regional expansion efforts. He was for 10 years working at McKinsey and specifically working with savings and investment products for the EMEA countries. So please welcome our next uh, chat and, and our next speaker, Dr. Tamis Georgette, co-founder and CEO of Racing. Ah, there we go. Tamis, Dr. Tamis, pleasure having you. Yeah, great to be here. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. You have a first row experience of what, what the pandemic is doing to the fintech, fintech industry, both because you see it through your company, but also because you do a lot of partnerships with a, with a lot of other companies in the space. So what is your take? How is the pandemic, how is coronavirus affecting the, the financial industry? Um, I think the effect is still uh, needs to be seen, to be honest. So we've uh, seen a first wave, um, and in March and April, uh, we've seen banks which are partnering with us in the rates uh, quite a lot because uh, alternative wholesale funding became more expensive. Uh, and on the other side, we also see that uh, effect receding through the summer so that uh, the um, it's go down again uh, for the um, uh, banks, and they are getting back to normal. So what we've seen is that actually they've been very fast in switching over to remote work, so that some of our largest banks haven't onboarded yet. We've onboarded fully remotely. So we've launched in the last month uh, Unicredit with their German entity, HVB. Klarna, we've launched first from the BPCA network on uh, our platform. And these are very large banks where we would have that it takes them a bigger effort and uh, there's uh, um, a bit more restrictions when they work remotely, and it turns out uh, it works out quite well. Then. So, what happens on balance needs to be seen yet. Yeah, no, that's a very good point. I mean, sometimes people go full, full steam ahead with their predictions, and we're still probably unfolding or seeing the unfolding of the effects and what's going to happen next, definitely. Um, as someone, are you seeing like a change in behavior from your users? Do you see more people uh, getting deposits, putting their savings, taking them out? Uh, well, uh, do you see strong changes in, in the trend there? Yeah. Um, so that's interesting. Actually, people have been putting more money aside. So the effect of the crisis has been uh, that uh, there are laws, there are state schemes which support employees. Uh, and at the same time, people were unable to spend the money. That's uh, what we see overall in the market, is that there is more cash at hand. At the same time, in March, April, uh, when the uh, virus spread was the fastest at least here, when we had the full lockdown, people had definitely other things to do than optimize their savings, so that we've seen uh, a bit of uh, uh, receding activity which has uh, come back since then fully. So uh, summer was uh, very good, uh, at least what concerns uh, raisins for business and savings. And also capital markets have been rebounding. But we have our robo-advisor solution. Agenda. And speaking of your experience, uh, you guys do a lot of partnerships. So I was wondering, because there's a lot of other fintech companies that also have to go through that kind of uh, partnership dancing. So what, what kind of tips or tricks could you share with them in terms of how do you, how do you nail those partnerships? I think uh, nailing is the smaller challenge than making them successful. So we have <laughs> in total 150 active partnerships, and you name them from very large insurance companies towards neobanks, so N26 and Monisa, so partners. We work with uh, incumbent banks like Commerzbank, or one of the savings banks in Germany. Um, and uh, we work with uh, large fintech players like Lana. And the experience has been that there are, um, I would say, three key success factors, of which uh, you need to put very transparent in front of the partner as well. First thing is being clear what you are aiming at and what the objective is and being very explicit about it. So what's the success, what is not? Because sometimes partners have different uh, uh, topics in mind. If there is a large bank where the business will not be relevant in the years to come anyways, 
they would sometimes see it as a testing ground, which is, of course, for a fintech, which is rather more in the fundraise and uh, building up cash flow mode, uh, is uh, a bit disappointing. But being transparent about that and saying what actually each party awaits from each other is very, uh, very important. The second one is, as a, as a fintech founder, you are in a smaller company. I mean, we have 350 employees, so that it's manageable and uh, the attention of sea level is guaranteed by design. Uh, in uh, many bigger places, actually, you need to create this focus and attention uh, of the MD or sea level, ideally, where people not only track to the project towards the launch, but also after. And this is what we see because once the PR news is out, sometimes the attention span is also too short and it breaks up. And then uh, if there is no top management attention, also not the, uh, on the other side. And the third one is agility and ability to uh, adjust the partnership. Because what we've seen, the initial idea doesn't work out uh, in uh, many cases. So that you need to develop and to refine the partnership, the use case, the marketing approach with the partner. So that at the end, being communication and being able to find the next level, define the changes, that's essential because uh, the initial ideas really work. Okay, well, wow, that was impressive. Thank you so much for your insights. It's, it's not very usual that you have first row experience and having someone uh, with your track record and what the, your company has achieved uh, sharing these tips. So I deeply appreciate, I think everyone in the audience is also gonna appreciate that. Well, thank you very much for your time, Dr. Thomas. It's been a pleasure. Uh, Dankeschön, feel dank for Thanks your- Thanks a lot, and for PTM your... was not in Madrid this time. Well, don't worry. Next, we next will... year again, hopefully. We will make it happen. Beers are on me. Well, wine's here. <laughs> Thank you very much.